in this second week of a lecture, we will be focusing on four concepts. So stress, where we are going to talk about uh, the relationship between stress and force, strain, where we are going to talk about uh, the relationship between displacement and the strain, and uh, equilibrium equivalence and uh, constitutive loss. In today's lecture, we will focus on the first two, stress and strain. And uh, in the lecture on Friday, we will talk about equilibrium equivalence and uh, constitutive loss. These, uh, these relationships are fundamental to finite element method. And understanding their relationship can really help us to understand how finite element method works. We will begin by looking at a stress. In a one dimensional situation, stress is defined as a ratio between force and uh, area. So we can think of a stress as the force per unit area. For example, when we have a beam like uh, this picture, And we exert a force F on both sides to pull this beam. Then the stress in the middle, where it cut, where it cut, if we cut it like this, then the stress is equal to F over the cross section area. Alternatively, if we cut the beam diagonally, We can find the stress acting on this internal plane. For instance, if we define this angle, if we define this angle as theta, then the area of this cross section is uh, A over cosine theta. And the stress acting on this plane is equal to the force divided by this uh, area is equal to cosine theta times the F over cross-section area A. So here we can decompose the stress into two components. One that is uh, perpendicular to the plane, which is called a normal stress and uh, the other one that is uh, parallel to the plane, which is called a shear stress. In, in a general three-dimensional situation, stress can be viewed as a vector acting on a plane. We can call the force vector per unit area, the traction vector, or stress vector. This vector at a point inside of the body can be defined after removing the adjacent material and considering a, fo a force vector delta P exerted by removing the material on an area delta A surrounding that point. The traction vector acting on the plane with the normal direction, if we assume the normal direction is n. Then we can denote the traction vector acting on this plane as Tn. This value is equal to the ratio between the force and uh, area. And and it's equal to Tn is equal to delta P over delta A. Here we can note that the traction vector is a vector force per, U, per area on, on a plane.
the state of a stress at a particular point inside a continuum is well defined by using three by three matrix called the Cauchy stress matrix or stress tensor. Knowing this uh, matrix allows uh, the calculation of any traction vector on any plane passing through that point. First, we consider a infinitesimal cube at a point inside the material. And we consider the three faces perpendicular to basis vectors E1, E2, and E3. The force vector per unit area on each of these three faces has three components. Therefore, there are line components in total. The matrix representation of a stress tensor is like this. So sigma is a three by three square matrix. Now let's take a look at how each component was defined. For any stress component, sigma IG. So for any component sigma IG. I is defined uh, as the uh, I is the normal direction of the plane, and G is the direction of the force. Is is the G is the direction that force parallel to. Let's take uh, sigma one one as an example. So this force. So it's in the plane with the normal direction of E1. So the first subscript is one. And uh, this force is perpendicular to E1. So the second uh, subscript is uh, one as well. Then we can define sigma one, two, sigma one, three. And uh, after we define the uh, forces uh, on these three pieces, we get uh, this uh, stress uh, tensors. The relationship between stress uh, tensors and the stress, uh, the relationship between traction vectors and the stress matrix is such that uh, if uh, we cut this uh, cube like this, Then we will find uh, a tetrahedron by with the three faces perpendicular to E1, E2, and E3. And uh, for this uh, arbitrary plane, we will have a traction vector Tn acting on it. And if the normal direction of this plane is n. And the Tn has three components, Tn1, Tn2, and Tn3. Then the relationship between Tn1, Tn2, and Tn3 between the matrix sigma can be calculated by using uh, is equal to Tn is equal to sigma transpose times uh, the normal direction. Since the uh, uh, stress matrix is uh, symmetric, then it's also equal to sigma times n. So earlier in the lecture, uh, we learned that uh, normal stress is uh, perpendicular to a plane and the shear stress is uh, parallel to the plane. Now we will take a look at uh, how to calculate uh, normal and the shear stress using traction vector. Given a state of a stress described by sigma from R3 to R3, 
and given a plane with normal direction of n. The normal stress sigma n is a real number representing the component of the force acting perpendicular to the plane. And uh, it's equal to the dot product of Tn and its normal direction. N. So for example, if we have an arbitrary plane here and we have a, a traction vector Tn and the normal direction of this plane is N, then sigma N is equal to the dot product of Tn and the normal less the direction vector. And the shear stress can be calculated by finding its uh, uh, projection on the plane. So Tn is e so the shear stress vector is equal to Tn minus sigma n times uh, its uh, normal direction. And its value is equal to the norm of this vector. Now let's take a look at an example. So if we have a stress state sigma, which is a one, 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 three, and uh, we know we are interested in the plane with the normal direction of one, one. So let's calculate uh, traction vector, shear force and uh, normal force, normal stress. So first we need to normalize the direction of this plane. So after normalization, the normalized uh, uh, direction of the plane is equal to 0 0.707 and 0 0.707. And then we can find the traction vector. Traction vector Tn is equal to the stress state times uh, its normal direction. And after finding this uh, traction vector, we can project it uh, on the direction of the plane and uh, so we will get a green vector. This is the normal stress. And uh, we can find the shear stress by, by using shear, force, shear stress vector by using Tn minus uh, uh, the normal stress is the sigma n. So sigma n times, uh, times its direction. And uh, find the norm of this vector will give us uh, the shear stress value. So similarly, for a three-dimensional stress state, which is the 111-151-116, with the normal direction of uh, n, which is uh, 111. So first thing, we need to normalize the normal direction. And uh, after we find the normalized uh, direction vector, then we can calculate uh, traction vector acting on this plane by using stress state times the uh, normalized uh, direction vector. And then we can find the uh, uh, normal stress by using the, it's equal to Tn dot the normalized uh, direction of the plane. And the shear, the shear stress is equal to, the shear stress vector is equal to Tn minus, Tn minus the uh, normal stress times its direction. And uh, the shear stress value is equal to the norm of this vector.
Now let's talk about uh, principal stresses and uh, principal directions. As sigma is uh, symmetric, in the first lecture, we learned that uh, there can be a coordinate uh, system where the component form of a sigma is a diagonal. If we are using, if this uh, coordinate system is, is uh, the one that is aligned with the eigenvectors of the uh, stress tensors. And the eigenvectors are called the principal directions and the eigenvalues of that uh, stress state is called the principal stresses. The principal uh, stresses is denoted as uh, sigma one, sigma two, and sigma three. So we only have uh, one subscript. So in a general state, uh, uh, in a general stress state, sigma is equal to sigma one one, sigma two two, sigma three three. So it's uh, uh, different. Now let's uh, take a look at uh, uh, an example. If we have a stress state, sigma is uh, one, 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 three. So how can we find the principal directions and the principal stress? So first the thing we need to do is uh, to find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors for this uh, stress state. And after finding that, so the eigenvalues is uh, 0 0.58 and 3.41. And uh, it, we will have two eigenvectors. And these two eigenvectors will be the principal stresses directions. So then we need to uh, do a transformation. So if we are going to use eigenvectors as basis uh, vectors, then we can find a transformation matrix. And after transformation, sigma prime is equal to Q times sigma times Q transpose. We will get a diag we will get a diagonal uh, matrix. And uh, so the principal stress is equal to 0 0.58 and 3.41. So this is equal to the eigenvalue. Now let's talk about uh, maximum uh, shear stress. As we discussed uh, earlier, the function of the stress matrix is uh, to obtain the force per unit uh, area acting on a particular plane at the point of interest. So as the orientation of the plane changes, the shear stress and uh, the normal stress uh, on that plane changes as well. So, the maximum shear stress is a real number that represents the maximum uh, shear stress. And uh, we can get this uh, value by reorientation of the plane. So it's equal to half the maximum difference between the principal stresses. Now let's take a look uh, now let's take a look at uh, how to find the maximum shear stress given a, a state of a stress. So here, so I'm going to use the uh, uh, principal stress state, sigma one and sigma two. And uh, then we need to reorientation this uh, uh, stress state. So, Let's assume we have a pure rotation matrix uh, cos cosine theta, sine theta, active uh, uh, sine theta, cosine theta. And uh, 
after transformation, we will have a general uh, state of uh, stress. It's, it looks like this. So we are interested in maximum shear stress. So we are looking at uh, sigma 1, 2 and sigma 2, 1. And then we found these uh, two components is equal. So let's just uh, maximize uh, this uh, expression. So in order to find the maximum uh, value for this expression, we can uh, find the first derivative of this expression with respect to theta and make it equal to zero. So after solving for theta, we get theta is equal to 45 degree. And uh, when we plug in 45 degree to this uh, expression, we get uh, maximum uh, uh, shear stress is equal to sigma two minus uh, sigma one divided two. So in order to find the, so what does this mean? It means uh, the maximum shear stress can be obtained by rotate uh, principal plane by 45 degree. So let's uh, um, take a, a look at uh, two examples. So um, to sum up, in order to find the maximum shear stress, we need to do, uh, we have two steps. First, we need to find the principal planes. And then second step, we need to rotate principal planes by 45 degree. So let's take a look at a two dimension uh, example. So here we have uh, a general stress state sigma is equal to one, 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 three. In order to uh, find the maximum shear stress, first step, we need to find the principal plane. So in order to find the principal plane, we need to uh, find the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors for this uh, uh, stress state. And then we can, after solving eigenvalues and uh, eigenvectors. Then we can, find, uh, we can find the transformation matrix Q that, uh, give, that uh, rotate the stress state to align with the principal directions. So after first rotation, we got Q pre prime is equal to 0 0.58. 0 and uh, 0 and 3.414. So, so from this figure, you can see now we only have uh, normal stress and uh, in the principal plane. Now we need to rotate the uh, principal plane by 45 degrees. So now we need uh, another uh, transformation matrix, which is Q2. Since we already know the angle is 45 degree and uh, a pure rotation matrix is uh, like this. Then we plug in a 45 degree, we will get the, the second transformation uh, matrix. And after second, uh, transpose, we can find our maximum shear stress, which is equal to 1.4, 1.4, 2, 1.4.